Let's now move on to the next part. This is a parallel circuit. And the reason it's called parallel circuit is because if you look at the circuit, it current has basically more than one route to flow. Uh, the current can take this route starting from here, it goes here. When it gets over here, it basically has two options, okay? Some of it will flow here, some of the current will flow here. So you basically have one route here, and then you have another route this way. So you are allowing currents to flow uh, in two different ways, or in more than one way. So that's one indication that it's a parallel circuit. Now in this circuit, I have a 5 volt power supply, and I got two resistors of some unknown values. It's not of significant what are the values of this resistor. So how to build a circuit, how to build a parallel circuit on a breadboard. So let me get my circuit back here. And I am going to use the second approach. And that approach was I would basically try to make a circuit just like it appears on the paper. Okay, all right. So again, let me take just two random resistors, okay, okay. I know if I put these resistors right here, like this, okay, both of these resistors, their terminal is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. This terminal, this resistor is connected to this terminal this is basically same terminal okay so you have five volts here this is something that you should always remember in a parallel circuit CKT is a short form for the circuit in a parallel circuit voltage always remains same voltage but the current is going to be different so say if these values are 2k and 2k both values are same for the resistor so the equal amount of current will travel through these two resistors. But if I double the value of this resistor, so this is 4K, this is 2K, the current, more current will flow through R2 because it has a slight, slightly uh, lesser resistance to offer it to current versus R1, which is 4K, twice as big as R2. Okay, makes sense? Okay, let's now make this circuit. I am going to, now I'm not saying I've got the same value. These are just values, uh, resistors of some random values. So 5 volt going into R1, 5 volt going into R1, 5 volt going into R2. Now this end of the resistor is connected to the ground. This end of the resistor is connected to the ground. And I could do it basically uh, two different ways. One way I could do this is basically connect this and then connect it to the blue which is the ground here and similarly connect this hole remember these are all vertically connected and then connecting it to the ground now I'm not using this part of the breadboard I basically don't need it right another way I could do it so this is just one way it basically looks very similar to how I, how I have on this piece of paper okay Another way I could do it, which will save me a little bit of space and wires. Remember, anybody can make a circuit. A good circuit designer is someone whose circuit is neat, tidy, compact, and easy to troubleshoot. Remember, you're going to make an error, and that's perfectly fine. You're going to make an error, but if you have a messy looking circuit, good luck troubleshooting your circuit. But if you have a nice, tidy looking circuit, troubleshooting becomes a lot more easier. So there's a tip right there. What I'm gonna do, if you notice here, R1 and R2, they basically have a common node right here, correct? They are connected to ground, right? This is your ground, okay? They both are, the both terminals of the resistor two are connected to the ground, basically negative terminal of the DC battery. So I can connect them like this. Notice here, I have both resistor, this terminal is connected to 5 volt, 5 volt, so it's connected to the red rail, and the other terminal of the resistor is connected to the ground, negative terminal, so I have on top of each other, and I know this, these two are connected, and I can just simply use a jumper wire now, 
and connect it right here because these are vertically connected and connect this to the ground and it will make uh, the same circuit that I have over here. It's just I have one less jumbo wire here in this circuit, which is great. Also, uh, I strongly encourage you to use different colors of wires if you have a big circuit. And so in color code them such that your all your reds are p uh, power supply, positive terminal, all your blacks are ground and blues should be input and things like that. Okay, now I am going to switch back to how I designed the circuit previously. And the only reason I'm doing that is because it might be easier for me to explain how to measure current across these resistor that's what our next goal is okay okay now let's look over here just like we were measuring the voltage what we were doing we would basically hook our multimeter to these two terminals of the resistor plug our multimeter in, connect the cables, and then measure the voltage, right? Voltage. This is not going to work in case of measuring the current. For me to measure the current flowing through resistor R2, I need to disconnect here. I need to disconnect the wire. In other words, I basically take the wire here and take this wire ground here, allowing the current to flow through the multimeter. Okay, there's no path right here. The current flows here, go past R2, then takes this route, go past multimeter, and then returns to the circuit. So you're basically allowing the current to go all the way to the multimeter and then come back to the circuit, okay? So how are we going to have this disconnect? Well, what I'm gonna do here is basically disconnect this part of the circuit and also disconnect the leg of the resistor. And what I'm gonna do before I can measure the current, I need to set it to, Ms. Okay, I need to. This needs to be connected over here. So this goes to 10 ms. Okay, all right. Now, what I'm going to do is positive terminal to the leg of this resistor. And then the negative terminal to this jumper wire right here. So basically I have my multimeter connected here, allowing the current go past the multimeter. And then I have connected the positive, the black, uh, the black terminal, negative terminal to back to the circuit through this wire. So my current is basically going through. And I'm, if you look at my readings, the current across the resistor is 0 0.014 amps. In other words, I can also write it down as 14 milliamps. Let's find out the current across R1 now. So let's disconnect these cables. Let's restore the circuit back again. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing which I did earlier. Disconnect this wire and disconnect the leg of the resistor. Connect positive cable to the leg of the resistor, negative cable to the leg of the jumper wire. Okay, so again I have disconnected the circuit, the current comes here, take this route, go through the multimeter and returns back to the circuit. Now if you look at the readings, I'm basically getting 0 0.004. So IR2 
is basically 0.004 m's, which is actually equivalent to say 4 milli m's. 4 milli m's. And if I add the two currents, I basically get 18 milli m's. Okay. What does that mean? That means you got 14 milli amps over here traveling across R1. You got 4 milli amp traveling across R2. That means total current over here is going to be a sum of 4 milli amps for 14. That is 18 milli amps. So you have basically 18 milli amps traveling into this node and then 14 milliamp goes here, 4 milliamps goes here, most of the current flows through here that suggests the value of R on this resistor is a lot more smaller than this resistor right here. Okay, all right, now this time around, I'm using the cable alligator clips to supply five volts right here, okay? And then my goal is to measure the current, which should equals 18 milliamps. And therefore, what I need to do is basically disconnect the circuit right here. Connect this terminal to the multimeter, the positive. So I'm going to disconnect here. Or maybe what I could do is just basically insert a wire here. Okay. Disconnect the circuit from here. Okay. Connect the positive cable to here. Okay, so I got this part covered and I got the negative cable connected to this node, which is this blue wire sticking out. And if I connect it over here, basically 18 milliamps actually, 18 milliamps. So my total current is actually 18 milliamps and that's what we were hoping also because when we add the current that was the current drop across this resistor it adds up to 18 so what is kcl then okay kcl would mean so say you have a node okay and you have multiple currents coming in or going out then say this is your i1 this is your i2 and this is your I3. So the algebraic sum of the current entering the node and leaving the node will basically be equals to zero. So because this current I1 is entering the node, so it will have a positive sign, I1. And then you got I2 also entering the node, so I2. I3 is leaving the node, so negative I3 equals to zero, okay? Now here, this is my I1, which is R1. This is my I2, okay? And we have this node right here, okay? And the total current is going to be IT. This is the current that is leaving, entering the node. This is the current that is leaving the node. And this is the current that's leaving the node. So our equation will be total current IT minus I1 minus I2 equals to zero. IT is 18 milliamps. I1 is 14 milliamps. I2 is 4 milliamps. And if you look at, do the math, it comes down to zero. And so that's what the KCL is. Current entering the node, always going to be equal to current leaving the node. This was a very, very basic of how to build a circuit on a breadboard. I got, I did two kind of circuits, parallel circuit, series circuit, and also showed you how you measure the voltage and current using multimeter, and then how you supply a voltage using the power rails on a breadboard. So uh, again, you know, give me a feedback. How do you like this video? If I can help you in any way, please don't hesitate to ask for it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I really want your support. Thank you. Bye.